Chapter 1 Yasin, would you like to say the blessing? I'm jolted from another formless grey daydream. Night cycle is falling on Pixis Hive, and I've spent the last sixteen hours on an assembly line. It takes me a moment to process what she said. The faint buzz of Amasek isn't helping. Well, not with this. Myra. Sweet, beautiful Myra. She's staring expectantly at me. Blue eyes encouraging me to pray. She's always encouraging me to pray. Especially in front of the children. The Emperor is our father, after all, she says. They should learn about him from their own father. Of course, I say finally with a tired smile. We bow our heads over the plates. Marcus, Arden, and little Sophia. Making the Aquila over their chest. Mighty Emperor, we thank you for your blessings this day. For light you give us in darkness. Please protect us from harm and bless this food, that it might nourish our bodies so we may continue our service to you. I pause. I never know how to end prayers. Thank you. I say finally. I open my eyes. Myra is smiling. Marcus and Arden are picking up their food. Sophia is still whispering, eyes closed, as though she's speaking to the Emperor himself. When she finishes, we eat. Our rations are simple, but nutritious. Reconstituted crox meat. Carbohydrate sticks in grey fungus Mara has seasoned to make it somewhat palatable, along with vitamin gel packets and anti-rad pills to starve off radi radiation sickness. The walls of our hab unit are well lined, but the manufactorum overseers prefer to err on the side of caution. I eat ravenously. We all do. Marcus and Arden, eight years old and growing almost too fast to believe, scoff down their food in between groaning about having the same meal for breakfast. Sophia, already so bright, eats happily, humming something to herself as she chews. Mara eats quickly, too, so she can begin cleaning up the dishes. Outside the window, I suddenly hear the fromping of boots, as familiar as the coming of night. Third patrol tonight, I say abruptly watching the enforcers through the slits of the window coverings, within moments of procession of glowing black helmets passing by. There are patrols all around the factory today, too. Why are there so many, Papa? Sophia asked, though a mouthful of vitamin gel. I gave her the best smile I could summon. They're here to keep us safe, Starshine. I don't mention the three patrols as out of the ordinary, even for our hab block. I heard they found another body down the street, Marcus bloods out suddenly. Yeah, I heard his eyes were cut out and full of bugs and... Enough, I bark, harsher than I meant to. The room spins a little. I take a swallow of water, chase my guilt, grimacing at the metallic taste. Honestly... Where do you two even hear such nonsense? The twins look at each other. I know that look. They're trying to decide whether or not to lie. At the scholar! Arden admits finally. I snort and return the food growing cold on my plate. You shouldn't believe everything you hear from your little friends at the scholar. I lie. And you're scaring your sister. Sophia gives me her best I'm not scared face but I can see the fear in her way too wide of eyes. I can't blame her. I'm scared. Even if I can't let it show. Myra gets up and begins collecting the dishes, brushing off the morbid talk with the ease of apparent use to quickly changing the subject. Well, do you know what I heard today? What is it, my dear? I say quickly, likewise eager to speak of something else. You remember old Garin? Of course. Garin Mansik, the blind guardsman, 
had been begging down by the cathedral since I'd been a boy. What of him? Mama smiles, as though in possession of a great secret. He can see. Huh? I shrug, going back to my plate. How did he afford bionics? No, not bionics, Myra urges, settling down the plate she's washing. It was a miracle. I don't mean to raise an eyebrow, but I do. A miracle. What happened, Mama? Adrian mumbles through a mouthful of food. Marco swallows his food first. Yeah, tell us. Myra sits down on the edge of the table. The children are instinctively enraptured. She's ten times the storyteller I'll ever be. Well, I was walking home from the cathedral, and I saw him there, dancing in the street. He said he'd been seen by an angel in a dream, and when he woke up, he could see. An angel, Sophia squeaks. An angel from the emperor. Isn't that exciting? She says, clapping her hands. She's looking at me, expecting an answer. Collaboration, support. I take another sip of Amsec to buy myself a few moments to think of something to say. Something that isn't callous or bleak. Suddenly, I'm six years old again at my father's memorial service, standing in a room not ten feet from where I'm eating dinner. The Emperor's miracles are all around us. I say, remembering a piece of scripture someone had read. And if you pray hard enough, miracles will happen to you. The rest of the night passes quickly. I sit in my favorite chair, attempting to keep my eyes open until it's time to put the children to bed. I fight the urge to finish my amsec because I know I'll just pour another, and I've already had too much. Myra reads to them from a pamphlet she got from a cathedral. Somehow, even at the end of the day, she never seems to lose her vigor. So, like my own mother, before she lost her own mind. Eventually, Myra's story of Sebastian Thor comes to a close, and it's time to put the children to bed. The boys protest, as they protest having to do anything besides run in circles and fight. But Myra tactfully guides them to their rooms with the mother's gentle hand, far more efficiently than I would have. I led Sophia to her tiny sleeping enclave and tuck her into bed. I go to extinguish the lumen. Good night, starshine. Sleep well. Papa. I turn. She's quiet for a long moment, fidgeting with her tattered doll. Old was she when I made it for her. One, two. You won't let the monsters get me, right? The ones Marcus and Arden are talking about. Oh, Starshine, I say, going to my knees beside her bed and taking her hand in mine. There are no monsters here. Her face scrunches up in thought. I can see her little mind turning it over, wondering whether or not to trust me. She's clever and more observant than I give her credit for. Still haven't fully accepted that she's not a baby. Papa, would you pray to the Emperor for me? Sophia, you know you can pray to the Emperor whenever you want, and he will hear you. I reply. It sounds like something Myra would say, except she sound like she actually believed it. I know, but I want you too. She protects softly. Please. I concede, of course. But could I not? What kind of father wouldn't pray over his sacred little daughter? I close my eyes and make the Aquila over my heart. O oh, glorious emperor, enshrined on holy terror, I humbly beseech you. Please let your mortal light shine down on this bed. Keep it extra, extra safe so that my little girl can sleep tonight. She opens her one eye. And no bad dreams. She interjects. I stifle a chuckle. And please give her a good dream. Sophia smiles. 
As far as prayers go, it wasn't one of my best, but it seemed to be sufficient. Thanks, Papa, she says, holding open her arms for a hug. I wrap her up in a long embrace. Outside, I hear the stomping of steel-toed and force of boots, and in the distance, screaming. The Emperor protects my love, I whisper, as I hold her tightly to my chest. And so do I. Chapter 2 Shipment arriving, Dock 4. The Servitor drones. Carrier tag, 1, 4, 7, 8, 2, dash, 4, 2, 1. Mari jogging towards a loading bay as a ground hauler groans into the disembarkation hub. I'm never not jogging, running, or sprinting somewhere. And I know where and when my shipments are coming in without some lobotomized holborn telling me. I've been working in this factory since I was 13 years old. Terran standard, like my father before me. I sent no loading mech clanks towards a lumbering ground hauler. Its cargo is comprised of battery chemicals and metallic coils, omnisome housing and steel canisters, as it is seven times per day. Every single day into the galaxy ends, all the material required to manufacture Lasgun powder packs, the munitions powdered by Irurtom supply the Emperor's armies across the sector. I'm but a minuscule cog in the process destined to be replaced the moment I can no longer fulfill my duty. But I'm a competent cog, serviting the Emperor in whatever limited capacity I'm able. I tap my data slate, relaying the updated manifest to the central cogitator that will eventually feed the Mechanicus Overseer. Magos Gould, in charge of the Manifactorum Complex, A message flashes back, indicating that we're 27 minutes behind schedule for our next outboard shipment, and that as shipment supervisor, I'm being held directly responsible. A percentage of your weekly rations is being deducted. Blessed are those who serve the Emperor in body and soul. Let's get those crates unloaded! I shouted to the Sentinel pilot, heedless of my headache. You three! I yelled to the monitor, ask, loading servitor standing mutely nearby. Housing the filaments to assembly line gamma 426, plasma cells to ratho 86, and delta 281 for overflow. Compliance. The machine drone in something approaching scenography, before stumbling off to complete their task. I sigh deeply, almost too deep until I feel like my chest is going to explode. Everyone is working 18-hour shifts. I can't remember the last time I slept more than a few hours. We're working ourselves beyond exhaustion, and we're still unable to satisfy our daily quota because of the disappearances. It's a stupid term. When the local enforcers insist on using it, when they make their do lead rounds to question us about the people who've gone missing or more commonly turned up dead, mutilated, or worse, disappearances. The terms seem to imply that these people had simply vanished, like my mother did. The truth, whatever it is, is far more sinister than I can feel. Jahin, I heard we're going to miss our quota again. I turn around. Tobin. Good old Tobin. His sunken, bloodshot eyes resemble mine. We started working in the Manifactorum at the same age. Both orphans. We're a little behind. A little. I lie. We're actually predicted to miss our daily quota by 32%, which is more than the acceptable lenience threshold by the considerable margin. He looks at me. By the Emperor, he looks bad. I can only imagine how I look. I've been avoiding looking in the mirror. How are you holding up? He asked. <sighs> Let's say through a yawn. <sighs> you? I hear the soft thump in the distance. 
several workers look up from their labor, but only for a moment. It's all we can spare. He raises an eyebrow. You tell me, how far behind are we, really? I checked my data slate again and rubbed my eyes. The headache I've been fighting all day throws a haymaker behind my eyes. It would take a miracle at this point. Tobin laughs mirthlessly. Miracles don't happen in Pex's hive. Mara told me about the blind beggar down by the cathedral, you know. Garen Mannix, the old godsman. Yeah, what about him? Apparently he can see now. Says he saw an angel. I smile weakly. Sounds like a miracle to me. Tobin looks at me strangely. You didn't hear. Hear what? He's dead. I stop. The blind guardsman had been begging on the same corner by the cathedral since I was a boy. I pass him every day on my walk to the factory. I crawl back through the bleary smears of my memories. I can't recall seeing him the last few days. Uh, what happened? I asked hesitantly. Something in Tobin's face tells me I don't want to know. I didn't see it happen. I just heard about it. Tobin says. People said he was running around screaming, clawing at his eyes, saying he'd killed someone. Stuff like that. He pauses. Threw himself under a ground car. Gyron wasn't a murderer, I say firmly. He wasn't even crazy. Tubbin stares off in the distance. Sometimes a man has to do what it needs to be done. He says quietly to himself. Suddenly the ground shudders. Hard. Thousands of workers stop moving at once. I stand completely still for a moment, wondering if what I felt was just throbbing by my feet or something else. Then I feel it again. A tremor passing through the factory floor. A shiver of adrenaline courses through me. Everybody out! I shout. A klaxion bleatly begins to wail. Everyone who isn't a servitor drops everything and stampedes for the factory exit. Mago Skull's voice blares from the silver skulls, swarming over the heads. No one listens. A massive explosion rocks the factory. The blast wave slaps me to the ground. Feet trample me. Tobin yells something. I hear the growl of flames before I feel the wall of heat rushing towards me. For the first time since I was a child, I truly pray with all my heart and mind and soul. I pray to the Emperor because I don't want to die. Because I want to see my children again. But the Emperor doesn't hear me. As I know in my heart, he wouldn't. Ravenous flames engulf me, rowing so loud it drowns out the screaming of thousands of men burning to death. Chapter 3 I'm awake. My eyes open, sitting at my kitchen table. But it's a different table. Even though it's the same kitchen, different photographs on the walls, I get down from my chair. It's taller than I remember. I look down at myself. I'm a little boy. The kitchen is dark, but for a single dim lumen casting long, deep shadows. A fly buzzes past my head, stirring the rank, humid air. I hear a soft scrabbling around in the darkness, a murmur, like a distant voice. Uh, hello? I call quietly to the shadows. Hello, Jahin, says a familiar voice. My mother steps into the lumen light. M mother I stammer. She's exactly as I remember her on the night she left. Urban hair pulled back, wearing a white dress. Be at peace, Yahin. She says with a warm smile. I run up to her on my tiny legs of a six-year-old and throw my arms around her knees. She doesn't smell like I remember, but I don't care. Mother... I say again, by the Emperor, just saying her name feels divine. Mother, I, I was hurt. I, I, think I, I think I'm dead. Be at peace, Yahin, she says again. 
Do not be alarmed. You are not dead. I look around the familiar walls of the HAB unit, exactly as I remembered them as a boy. Am I dreaming? No. I feel the creeping sensation of unease working itself up my spine. You're not my mother, I say. My mother is dead. She's not dead, she replies sweetly. Just elsewhere. So what are you? My mother smiles the type of smile she often did before the bad days, before the visions. The Emperor sent me. I peer at the thing claiming to be my mother. Her form blurs more than the harder I stare at her, as though rebuking my memorial gaze. I think back to the local cathedral, to the stained glass windows depicting avatars of righteous fury vanquishing foul abominations in the name of the emperor. As though reading my thoughts, I suddenly see the suggestion of wings and a halo of holy light. I'm speaking to an angel. I fall to my knees and bow my head, unable to do anything but... Holy angel. I began having no conception of how I planned to finish my sentence. I resolved to press my forehead against the ground before it. Sweat drips into my eyes. Something buzzes past my ear. Rise, Yahin. My mother commands. I obey. Do not fear me. It is by the Emperor's grace, through me, that you stand here at all. What do you? Mother smiles. I saved you from death today, in the Manufactorum. A miracle. Mara was right. I... I don't... I stammer. I sound ridiculous. I can't even tell if I'm speaking to my mother or an avatar of the Emperor. I'd care more if I weren't so overwhelmed. You were saved for a reason, my son, she says, putting a hand on my shoulder. A purpose only you can fulfill. There must be some mistake, I say. I can't be. I mean, I'm... I'm, I'm not... I trail off. I'm not what? Worthy? Capable? I'm a husband who can barely stay sober enough to remain on his feet in the factory and tuck his kids into bed at night. My mother gives me a scolding look. Do you suggest the Emperor enthroned mistakes? No, I yelp. I would never. I just... What use would the Emperor have for someone like me? I'm not holy or brave. I'm broken. Because of your mother, the angel says. Uh, yes, yes. Because of you. I mutter weakly. Your prayers to the Emperor have not gone unheard, the angel replies with a reassuring nod. Not a one. He is aware of your suffering, for he sees all from the golden throne. The same creeping nausea worms through my gut, leaving me shivering. What promise am I to fulfill? Mother smiles sweetly too wide. This world is doomed. I can't help but tremble at its voice. What do you mean, doomed? I will show you. The angel reaches out a hand, somehow both gently and faster than I can prepare myself for. It touches my forehead. Agony, like a metal spike being hammered through my skull, floods me. And then I see. I see Praxis burning in living fire that gives no light. I see shadows with the faces of monsters slinking through the darkness, feeding on the hive world as it dies. I see men and women running, screaming, tearing at their bodies at crawling things gnaw through their skin. I see the blood of an innocence forming rivers in the streets as the skies turn the color of clotted Vitek. I see the insane 
carving their bodies apart, while thorny monsters praise their mutilation. I see the corpses of the children piled in rotting mountains that blot out the sun. I see Myra crying out in agony before a blood-drenched nightmare that devours her hope. I see Marcus and Arden pulling their eyes from the skull so they don't have to see. I see. I see. Sophia. The vision ends. I suck in putrid air like a drowning man. <sighs> By the Emperor! I choke out. My heart is on fire. Like I've swallowed poison. I double over, vomiting across the floor. What? What's that? <sighs> I finally gasp. But the taste of the fate that awaits this world, and every soul in it, the angel says in my mother's, you'd better take this seriously, Tone, unless you stop it. I can't close my eyes. Every time I blink, I see echoes of that horrible reality etched on the backs of my eyelids. But how can I stop it? I gasp. I'm nobody. So were many of the Emperor's saints. The divine may do its work through anyone, no matter how small. But first, the angel pauses. You must prove your devotion to the Emperor. My... Devotion? The angel's form seems to blur in the lumen light. The emperor has heard your prayers, Yahin Hertz. He has also heard your sulking disbelief, your unrepented sins. The power to save this world and your family cannot inhabit a broken vessel. I cling tightly to my mother's leg. I'll do anything! I cry out unable to think of anything but the vision. Anything! Bring me the heart. Bring me the heart of the child you love most. I stop. The world stops. Not just me. The angel's words are like being doused in ice water. Its form blurs once more as my childhood home spins back into focus. No. My mother's face twists into a frown, the kind she made when she started hearing voices. There is a growl, thrums, from everywhere at once, pressing against my ears. You refuse, she says, still smiling brightly. I push away from her, my eyes sting with tears. I, I can't, you're... You're asking me to. The two. The Emperor knows what he asked. The angel says. Do you think you're the first person to have to make this choice? Do you not think he felt the same as you do when he sacrificed his sons to prevent the same doctors from swallowing the galaxy? My eyes brim with tears. Why the heart? I finally spit out. Why well, not the eyes, or the lips, or the tongue? Well, it doesn't matter! I scream at it so loud that my cl throat clenches. I am not killing my daughter! The choice is yours alone to make, my mother says grimly. I am only the messenger. Either you are said to the Emperor's test, or cleanse your spirit in your daughter's blood. Or you watch as your world and your family dies. You have until morning. The weak lumen light splutters and dies, drowning the kitchen in shadow. The angel sinks back into the darkness, leaving only two glowing eyes to regard me as the world fades away. I open my eyes. I'm awake. Burned flesh in voided bowels. I'm alive. A deceptic and lubricant. I shouldn't be alive. Wailing screams and animal howls. Where am I? My eyes trace the unstrudigant strutility of the Medicae wing. Roiling in complete chaos. 
blackened wrecks of streaming flesh are stacked on the two bed. Mewling prayers to the emperor and begging for death, corpses choke the floor, and there are far too few blankets to cover them all. Sisters Hospita and Medicae Servitors scramble between the dead and the dying, overwhelmed, out of control. Priests, confessors, and acolytes provide what secure they can. The last pistol crack of the Emperor's peace being administrated to the doomed barely penetrates the cacophony. It's like the vision from my insane dream in microcosm. Clad in glossy black carapace armor and clothed in ebon robes, there are no ordinary troopers. They shoulder through the insanity of the Medicaid wing, faces hidden behind glowering rebreather mask. They exude menace as they sweep through the room, grabbing servitors and holding them away to places unknown. I see an enforcer sergeant stop to interrogate the flustered sister. She turns and points in the direction of my bed. Oh no. Before I could think or react, the enforcers swarm over me. Within moments, I'm completely surrounded by hulking bodies and glaring helmets. Gloved hands grab me. You're coming with me, the lead enforcer growls, turning my blood cold as ice. I can't, I stammer. I was in an accident. I'm hurt. I can't see the enforcer's face, but I can somehow tell he's giving me a strange look. Only then do I actually look down at myself. Just like in the dream, there isn't a scratch on me. The enforcers hustle me into the makeshift interrogation room that might have been a supply closet. It reeks of antiseptic and machine lubricant. Two of them guard the door. Shock mall shouldered, but not activated. In the confined space, I can hear them breathing heavily. Then it hits me. They're afraid. The enforcer sergeant points to a chair in the center of the room. Sit, he commands. I obey. With a tired sigh, the lawman removes his helmet. Beneath is a face every bit as stern as intimidating as the mask. Gray and scarred with piercing eyes beneath a furrowed brow. He sits across from me, glaring until I could feel sweat breaking out on my forehead. Finally, he blinks, settling into his seat and consulting a data slate. Yainets, he says, scrolling through something on his slate. You're a lucky man. I don't feel lucky. The room feels stifling. Fusened, like in my ridiculous dream. What happened? I asked. Sub-level plasma generator suffered a critical failure, he replies in a clipped tone. Manifactorum was completely destroyed. By the Emperor, I whisper. My father worked in the factory. I spent more of my life in that building than I spent anywhere else in the world. And now it's gone. Oh, many. The sergeant raises an eyebrow. Dead. Or to tell, the survivors will be coming the wreckage for weeks. But with a degree of incineration, it'll be up to our best estimation, tens of thousands. I try to blink of something to say. Some words to encapsulate the shock and horror. Nothing comes to my lips. And then there's you, he growls, his voice dropping to an icy pitch. In that moment, I understand that this is a man who has killed people. What? What do you mean? The enforcer shrugs his armored shoulders. There's nothing innocent about the gesture. It looks mechanical, rehearsed. Factory power plant melts down. Pretty much everyone and everything in a mile radius gets turned to dust. And then we find you without a scratch on you. He leans forward, resting his elbow on his knee. He looked like a servitor trying to appear human. You understand why I'm a little curious? I fight the urge to shift uneasily in my seat. I'm suddenly acutely aware of the lawman behind me, and the sound of leather-clad fists tightening on weapons. A fly buzzes past me. I smell the stink of sweat. 
and the odor of sulfur. What are you implying? You have a hard life, your head hurts. The sergeant says, switching to a voice I believe he thinks sounds reassuring. He glances again at his data slate. Mother, lion hurts, suspected psyche, kills father, Corbin hurts, then vanishes. Son, Yahin hurts, sent to take his father's place in the manufactorum the day he turns 13 years Terran standard. My father wasn't murdered, I interrupt. The sergeant raises an eyebrow. Pardon? My mother didn't kill my father. I repeat angrily. He killed himself. The night she left. The forcer looks back at the data slate. I see an eyebrow twitch as his eyes scan the file. If that's how you remember it. And my mother wasn't a psyker. I add hotly. The sergeant gives me a long, blank look. I can tell he's mulling a different thought, but I can't determine what it is. Indeed, he says finally. Something in his tone set my teeth on edge, even though I know he's wrong. How do you know all this? I'm a sanctioned investigator. My mandate comes from the planetary governor himself, he says flatly. Do you think there's anything that goes on in my district that I don't know about? The implication leaves me feeling nauseous. My mother went crazy, and my dad killed himself over it. I say, that doesn't make me a criminal. The sergeant's icy blue eyes grow wider. Too wide. That kind of thing. Especially at a young age. It does things to a man, he says. They make you snap one day. You blow up the old manufactorum, for example. You think I... The enforcer surges to his feet, sending his own chair clattering to the floor. This may or may not surprise you, Yahin Hertz, but in accordance with the Lex Imperialis, I have the Emperor Mandate Authority to kill you in this very room whenever I damn well deem it. It also may or may not surprise you that today I am very low on patience. So, you are going to tell me everything you know right this very moment, or I will judge you in contempt of my investigation and shoot you in the head. You have until the count of three. My mind races. I can't breathe. I didn't do anything. His bolt pistol is in his hand. One. He's going to kill me. My stomach churns. I taste bile. I didn't do nothing! I scream. The cold metal barrel presses against my forehead. Two. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Right here. Right now. I didn't do anything! I sob. I just want to go home! The sergeant kicks his chair hard enough to twist the metal. Hear the sound of the hammer cocking back. And now do you explain the fact that you're sitting here talking to me instead of being scraped off the wreckage like everyone else in the factory? He bellows. How? Tell him the truth, Yahin. The enforcers approach behind me. I hear the sound of the sergeant's glove finger squeezing the trigger. It was a miracle. After an eternity, the sergeant holsters his weapon. Frantic breaths gasp out of me. I ignore the warm wetness running down my leg. A miracle, the sergeant sighs. Suddenly I'm back in weekly service, Myra and Marcus and Arden and Sophia at my side, listening to some priest whose name I can't remember, preaching to me about the Emperor's miracles all around me. He might have been the same priest who spoke at my father's funeral. I was saved by an angel, I say, swallowing my own self sense of disbelief. The sergeant raises a grizzled eyebrow. Really? And what makes you so damn special? You were chosen, Yahin. I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer to any of this. I've been trying to figure out where the Emperor was in my life from the moment my mother 
jabbering like a lunatic, ran out of the house into the darkness of the hive and never returned. I don't have an answer. Or at least one that makes sense. You're the only one who could prevent the darkness from consuming the world. The hairs on my neck stand up. Hello? What? The sergeant snaps. Skidness nightmares flaying men alive. I whirl around. There's only myself, the investigator and his two enforcers. Who said that? Do you hear that? The sergeant moves so fast I don't even realize it until I try to draw in my breath. I can't. His hand tightens around my throat. I hear armor servos whir over buzzing of flies. My feet leave the ground. Shrieking children drowning in boiling oceans of blood. I persecuted the Emperor's foes longer than you've been alive, boy. He growls. His voice is a cold fury. I see it in those gray, steely eyes. His justice is like a scoring flame. There'll be no shadows for the wicked to hide in. The sergeant slams me into the wall hard enough to dent the metal. I collapse to the floor, coughing, wheezing. The enforcers tower over me as I struggle for breath. The light of the interrogation room flickers. The smell. I can't breathe. Like a haunted carrion on the battlefield that never ends. The sergeant stares at me for a long moment as I lay on the ground, retching and gasping, studying me. Get him out of my sight! He growls suddenly. Mechanically. Gloved hands grab me by the shoulders. The door clicks open and I'm shoved out into the hallway. I see the sergeant muttering into his vox speed, his dead eyes lingering on me as the door slams shut. He's not letting me go. He's following me. Chapter 4 I flee the Medicaid facility as quickly as humanly possible. Clattering, orderly servitors attempt to record my information on reams of parchment as I pass through each wing of the hospital, but I run past each one without saying a word. The bottom eyes, menials, do nothing to stop me. The sisters are too concerned with saving lives to realize mine was just threatened. I feel the eyes of enforcers tracking me as I all but sprint into the streets. I can't see anyone following me but I know they're there, watching me. Only when I'm out of the streets, turning left and right at random, losing myself in the shadows of the hive, do I allow myself to actually breathe. The air is hot, hotter than it should be at this time of day. It smells like sulfur and ash. The explosion. How far away was it? How long was I in the Medicaid? I wonder, eyes on my boots, see nothing but a feral crate pressing beneath my feet. It doesn't feel real. None of it does. This morning I was kissing my wife and children goodbye and walking to the Manufactorum, fully prepared to spend the majority of my day building power packs. Now the Manufactorum is gone. Most of the people I know are dead. And damned enforcer thinks I'm somehow responsible. You need to focus, Yahin. Shut up! I say aloud. You're a dream. You're not real. I trudge through the darkening streets of the hive, turning this way and that way, drifting into a gray rumination and letting my feet guide me into the familiar path home. I pass into a tunnel, and the glow of the street lumens fade to black. Black as ashes, bleeding madness across the world. In the shadows I see glowing eyes watching me, following my every movement. Why do you doubt what you've seen? Because it's insane! I snap, walking faster. I mean angels, miracles, I just... It, it, it's all just... It's not that you don't believe, Yahin. It's that you fear what the Emperor has asked of you. I'm not going to kill my daughter! I yell, loud enough for my voice to echo. Onlookers give me a strangely knowing look and scuttle away, murmuring to each other pull my coat tighter around my shoulders, and all but run for home. A darkness is settling in, painting the hive in a gloom that not even the street lumens can touch. You saw what awaits them, should you fail. 
The vision, I can't escape it. Even when I blink, I see it. The urge to gouge out my own eyes is kept at bay by my only desire. To look upon my wife and children again. But it's still there. Embedded in my heart, even trying not to think about it, twist my stomach into nauseated knots. Why does it have to be her? I ask, feeling tears brimming in my eyes. Why? Power requires sacrifice, Athene. The Emperor is promising you the power to save her world and the rest of your family. Such power does not come without a price. Then the Emperor is evil! I shout, fighting back tears. His ways are mysterious. His plans are beyond fathoming to mortals. I pass the cathedral. Enforcers patrol nearby is the spot where Old Greon used to beg. There's an area cordoned off next to the impounded ground car. I see enforcers glance up at me as I walk by. Eyes tracking me. Did you do this to Greon? I ask. You concern yourself with matters beyond your comprehension, Yahoo. You showed him, didn't you? The festering corpses of my children stalk the streets where I once played. No! I scream out loud. I see more eyes turn towards me. I duck into a dark alleyway. I glance over my shoulder. I'm being followed, I know it. I'm gasping, panting, heart racing. It's so hot. I can't close my eyes. All I see is death and misery and suffering and horror and... You can prevent all this, Yahin. Just bring me her heart. I can't do it. I whimper. My head is pounding. My knees are weak. I can't. You have to. For them. How do I know this is real? I say to myself. How do I know I'm not losing my mind like... Like... Like my... my... Yahin, look at me. What? What? An icy shiver runs through me at the intensity of the angel's voice. I turn around slowly. Staring from the shadows behind me are two glowing eyes. Flies buzz around me. I smell sulfur. And voided bowels. Curdled blood and burning flesh. Time is running out of the Bring me your daughter's heart. Chapter 5 My hab unit is dark when I return home. Power still hasn't been returned to the workers' hab block. Most likely, weapon production has already shifted to other manufacturing facilities across the hive, requiring power to be routed to ensure that the Emperor's tithes are not late. I slide in through the door and stumble through familiar darkness to the kitchen. I'm going to do it. I have to do it. Every time I blink, I see the angel's vision haunting me. Howling abominations defiling my family over and over and over as they beg for deaths. Every microsecond is torture. Still, I make my footsteps as slow as possible as I shuffle my way towards the kitchen. Damnation, it's hot. I come into the kitchen, as dark as it is in my vision. I fumble past my dinner, wrapped in sealant. To the spare bottle of Amsec I keep hitting in the cabinet. Before I know it, I'm gulping it down, burning spirit, like a man dying of thirst. The first pull is hard, the second goes down easier. I remember the night my father died. No, the night he killed himself. He was so drunk he could barely slur his words. Wasn't he? What had he wanted to tell me? I wish I could remember. The third drag banishes the worst of the bad thoughts. The familiar fox focus of drunkenness settles on me. I clench my jaw as the haze narrows my vision and makes my... makes me forget my honor. For the horror. Yahin! I whirled around. An electro torch illuminates the room. Mara is sitting at the kitchen table, rubbing sleep from her eyes. 
Her beautiful face breaks into the widest smile I'd ever seen since the days when our children were born. She jumps up from the table, throws her arms around me in a tight embrace and buries her face into my chest. Her cheeks are wet. I thought you were dead, she whispers. What happened? The manufactorum generator exploded. I say flatly. Sabotage, I guess. She makes the sign of the Aquila over her chest. By the Emperor, she whispers. I've been listening to the Voxnet. The same thousands are dead. Are you okay? Are you hurt? I'm not hurt, I say, unable to hide my own disbelief. I'm fine. She wipes her eyes with her sleeve. How? They said the Manifactorum was completely destroyed. I pause, seeing the form of the angel in my mind, as though it's standing in my kitchen, urging me to fulfill the Emperor's test. It was a miracle. Myra gives me a strange look. Then her face breaks into a contained smile. We were all praying for you. Sophia, most of all. The Emperor has answered our prayers. I feel the tears brimming in my eyes. I grip my teeth to keep my jaw from trembling and hold her close to me so she can't see my face. I'm going to kiss the children goodnight. Why don't you go to bed? I'll be there in a moment to tell you all about it. Myra hugs me and kisses me warmly, deeply. I never want it to end. I love you, Yahin. She adds as she walks out of the kitchen. I love too. I say to the shadows after she's already left. I take the final swig of Amsec to force down the lump in my throat. I stumble towards Sophia's bed to do the Emperor's bidding. I stumble through the darkness towards the kitchen, hands slick with blood. Angel! I call into the darkness. I've done what the Emperor demands! Silent greets me. Angel! I cry out again. Show yourself! I'm here. A sweet voice says behind me. She's here. She's always been here. Elsewhere. I did it! I say, swallowing back my tears. I did! What you asked! Two hearts fall from my hands. Myra! I whisper. She hurt me. She didn't understand. I had to do it. You did, she says in the shadows. And you did marvelously. Better than I have ever expected. I didn't want to, I say to the shadows. I... I didn't ask for any of this, but I did it. Now what happens? What do you mean, Yahin? The angel asked pleasantly. You know what I mean! I snap angrily. How is the emperor going to, you know, use me to save this world? The angel pauses. Oh, the planet will be saved. My mind races. What I have been imagining would happen. Something divine and holy. But how? When? I ask, fleeing the blood on my hands begin to clot. Flies buzz around me. Nausea twists my gut. When enough sacrifices have been made, Yahin, the angel says behind me, when rivers of blood drown the world and the corpses of the innocent blot out the sun. My daughter's blood, my wife's blood is drying on my hands. My sons will be scared for the rest of their lives, just like I was. 
The horror of what I've done crushes down on me again and again and again. I suddenly feel my mother's gentle hand on my shoulder. There, there. She coos, her voice suddenly changing, deepening. I understand. Some of us are chosen for great and terrible things. I slowly open my eyes and look behind me. The hand on my shoulder is a malformed claw, chalk-white flesh and cracked, jaundiced talons. Her arms are too long, her body gaunt and withered, her mouth is a grinning, lampery maw of serrated fangs, weeping corruption. Her eyes are sunken pits, buzzing with flies. This isn't my mother. This is something wearing my mother like a skin. Just like my eyes. My mouth stretches in a soundless scream as the monster draws me into a loving embrace. Which light blazes from her rotten eyes. The laughter of madmen and wailing of the dam fills my skull. The abyssal horror of the warp yawns before me, a thousand times more terrible than the haunting vision I'd seen before. Salivating. Hungry. Eternal. The creature that was my mother hisses as it consumes me. We can be together forever. Ooh. That was a good one. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the little bit of, well, sound effects and stuff I added to this one because I just wanted to make it a little bit more, well, special just for the holiday season, you know. Halloween is one of my favorite holidays of all time. It's second on the list next to Christmas because Christmas is when I get to spend time with all my family and I get to see loved ones and... We just have a great time together. Just making things and doing stuff. And then my little cousin who I play Warhammer with. It's all great all around, you know? Alright, but we're not, talk we're not talking about Christmas. Even though stores all across America and other places are already having Christmas on full display. Removing Halloween entirely, even though... Halloween isn't re here for, like, what, another ten days? Maybe eight? Eight days, yeah. As of recording this. <clears throat> yeah. Love Halloween. It's my top holiday of all times. Anyways, that's enough about holidays and family. Let us continue on with our Patreon support members of the channel. Let us say thank you to Nicholas Gurr, Fortis Unam, Ricky Brown, Mike Hunt, Caesar E. Lopez, Cocoa, Zach Killer Coffee, Meltdown 480, Eldrick Maldred, Mr. Costman123, Lilac NPC, Starboard, Thompson235, Azuth89, Josh Sickles, Angela Nicholas, Matas, and Jamin Davison. Thank you all for being ongoing Patreon support members of the channel and new support members of the channel. If you want to be a support member of the channel, you can too in the link in the description down below where you get to see art, um, bloopers whenever they happen, uh, random stuff that I throw up on there from time to time. Honestly, I've kind of been neglecting it because I have a whole entire life going on right now and I've been trying to promote the YouTube channel to my family members so they can spread it to others that know 40k. I've been posting it on my Instagram, which is Fist of Dorn. Literally just Fist of Dorn has the Kyphus Kane icon. You can't miss it. I post art there as well. Nothing not safe for work. It's like safe for work stuff that's either blurred out or not safe for work stuff that's blurred out or just whatever I'm working on. If you want to see like uh, the risque stuff I'll be drawing, or I have been drawing, I just haven't posted on there because, you know, 
I, I have to make money somehow. <laughs> uh, Patreon is the place to go for all that. And if you want to have a commission done, go ahead and email me or message me on uh, Instagram with uh, whatever you want. I'll tell you my prices there. Unless you want a free one, just go ahead and ask me on Patreon. Dollar a month, there you go. Get a free $5 commission, which is just me drawing on a piece of paper. You get a free drawing of whatever you want. With limitations, of course. Anyways, how do you spend your holidays? How are you going to spend Halloween this month? Are you, do you even s celebrate Halloween? Because I know other people don't. I know some people don't celebrate. I, I know. Maybe you're, you're uh, Jewish and you don't celebrate uh, Christmas. You celebrate Hanukkah instead. You know, something like that. I don't know. Any other holidays or religions and stuff. Uh, I... Well... What are you going to do for Halloween? Are you going to go trick-or-treating with your kids if you have any? Or are you going to be spending it at home, drinking beer? Are you going to be working like I am? I missed out on six Halloween parties this month because of work. So, um... Uh... Anyways, money. <laughs> uh... Yeah. Prices are going up again, so things are costing more. It's almost eight dollars. No, six to seven dollars a gallon for gas. So I won't be really going anywhere anytime soon. Thinking about buying myself a bike so I can just bike myself to work and then on the way back home, build up my legs, make myself stronger one way or another. Anyways, I've been me, you've been you. Thank you again for watching another one of these videos. Enough of myself, pity. Good morning, good night, good afternoon, whatever it is going to be. Take care of yourselves out there and have yourselves a good one. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye bye.